they say that Moderna is the most dangerous of the bunch. And yeah. Moderna is who is working with Larry Ellison on this project? Right. So Moderna is making, and not only that, but listen to this, the government invested, our government invested over 500 million in Moderna to make bird flu vaccines. And didn't they just, is this, am I making this up? Well, did Trump just say that uh, they're no longer, that the CDC is no longer going to track bird flu cases? I think that just happened yesterday or the, or the day before. Is that they're going to stop tracking bird flu cases? Is that bird flu even even a thing too? What what is well, bird you know, flu? They're, they're testing the animals with PCR testing. You know how messy it is to to wrestle down a chicken or and try to stuff a, a Q-tip in there. <laughs> I mean, come on, Matt. What a messy job is to do PCR testing on chickens mm-hmm. or cattle and all the goo and everything else. Uh, the bottom line is bird flu is very mild. Uh, the animals get through it. Humans get through it. Uh, we need natural immunity. We have humans. We have treatment. The nasal sprays and gargles work really good. Even mm. eye drops uh, are useful there. And then we've got four antivirals: two oral ones, one IV, and one nebulized. So you, you know we don't need a vaccine for bird flu, but yet our government invested over half a billion dollars in Moderna. You know, listen, if Moderna wants to make a bird flu vaccine on their own money, that's their choice. But now the you know a government should not pay drug companies to create products. They have to create their own products based on market need and quality and safety. So our government investing. The European Commission has already bought the existing bird flu vaccine called CSL Sequarius antigen based vaccine. People died with that vaccine in the normal volunteer human trials. Can you imagine you sign up to be a normal volunteer in a bird flu vaccine trial and you die? I mean, 10 Mm. people died in that state. There's no way that taking shots for bird flu should ever be considered. I'm thinking if they are sticking the PCR swabs up chickens' noses, it means they just have a lot of those that they've ordered over the last few years. (laughs) They thought they would need more. They needed like, what do we do with these? Let's just test the chickens. Well, Matt, you know what the response is? That that what's called the biosecurity response is to kill all the normal chickens. Mm. So, you know, I went to the bird flu summit at University of Arkansas. They think maybe ten thousand birds have died of bird flu. Maybe. And birds can die of other things too. But they've intentionally killed ten million healthy chickens as what's called a biosecurity measure. They're trying to quote eradicate it. It's hopeless because bird flu is in mallard ducks and they're flying between all the farms and they keep reinfecting the farms. So all this mass killing of poultry is just right, causing a rise in the cost of eggs and chicken. And, and it's hopeless because the mallard ducks are spreading this. And in a paper that McCullough Foundation has published in the journal of Poultry and Wildlife Sciences, we have identified that the cause of the current strain of bird flu is gain of function research done at the USDA Poultry Research Center in Athens, Georgia, where they got it to transmit from mallard duck to mallard duck. So that's what happened. So this is a man-made created problem. Again? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so we were testing. I mean, Matt, Matt, did you hear about bird flu 15 years ago? No. I mean, this is what's going on now. Every threat that we see is probably going to come from a, a bio lab. So we were testing bird flu and figuring out how to make it more transmittable from right. from duck to mallard to mallard. And somehow it figured it out. It leaks out into the world. And it's a small case of people. But before that small case of the birds and for birds, we are killing a huge segment of our chickens, right. creating the cost of chickens to go up, the cost of eggs to go up, for there to be a chicken and egg shortage in that, in the country, and the price of eggs are going up, obviously. And the reality is, is that it's for a minority of birds that was created in a lab using gain of function. It's, and Matt, um, Matt, all that needs to happen, listen, if you look outside, male mallard ducks are common. They're not dead 
uh, you know, in ponds anywhere. So they're gaining natural immunity. We should just allow nature to get natural immunity. And this is going to be over with. In a paper by Garg and colleagues doing a journal of medicine, there's about 63 human cases in the United States. And in that paper, it's all mild. Uh, matter of fact, most of the humans get it during this culling procedure where they're trying to intentionally uh, you, you know, suffocate the chickens or whatever and, and kill them. That's if we just let the chickens alone, the humans wouldn't get bird flu and the chickens wouldn't get. Now, the one fatal the one fatal case that happened is an older man in Louisiana, and we don't have any proof that he actually died of bird flu. Very few details. He wasn't working in a chicken farm. He had some dead birds in his his backyard and had a mutated strain. So um, as we sit here today, this entire bird flu panic. They just UK just announced a a countrywide emergency. California's announced an emergency. It's completely man-made, and the emergency declarations are essentially fabricated. Sixty-three people got it. Most of them got it by trying to strangle the birds that had it. <laughs> this <laughs> this is wild. I can't believe that's a real thing. By the way. You, Matt, you can't make this up. And uh, and now the, the answer, according to the U.S. government, they put a half a billion dollars behind this, is a bird flu vaccine. Now, is anybody in your family and friend circle going to line up for a messenger RNA bird flu vaccine? Well, the answer is to create $500 million to create a mRNA bird flu vaccine and also to kill a huge segment of the chickens. Who does this benefit? It doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit you. Well, maybe you, because a lot of people are going to come to you like, hey, Dr. Peter, what's going on? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it really doesn't benefit humanity. It doesn't benefit the populace. It benefits a, it benefits Moderna, maybe their shareholders, maybe a people involved in the gain-of-function research. But who else does this benefit? Why why do we keep on allowing? It? Sorry, I'm just I'm every time I think about this stuff, I get so frustrated because But but Matt, in my book, Courage to Face COVID-19, we outline a biopharmaceutical complex. Very important. The uh you know, the World Economic Forum, the WHO, that you know, they rely on massive inflows of money. Gates Foundation, Wellcome Trust, Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, uh, the suppliers are these vaccine companies. There's easily now, you know, two dozen vaccine companies. They are getting rich contracts. Remember, the companies used to have to make their own products. Now governments are just pouring money into them, and then they respond to these government contracts. And so there's no marketing, there's no sales, there's no, uh, you know, competitive nature to the business. This is just a massive flow of money. And even if we don't use the vaccines, the companies keep the money. Thanks for watching the clip. If you want to see the full episode, click here. If you want to see more clips, click here.